Thank you. My name is Marjorie Farkerson, and I was working in the Council of Europe at the time when both Russia and Ukraine became very willing member states. Um, you spoke very interestingly about America and Russia, and I wonder if you could say something about Europe and the situation. It seems to me that one of the biggest successes of recent times was European negotiation with Russia for them to have access through the EU to Kaliningrad and have access to the Baltic. And it always seems to me that perhaps with a bit more imagination, an approach like that could have been taken towards the port in Crimea, for example. Have you had some thoughts on that? Yes, very good question. You know, I think one of the problems uh, with the European attitude most recently toward Ukraine was uh, that the negotiations for an economic relationship were done in conjunction, as far as Russians were concerned, with the implication that if the EU had more influence economically, NATO would be coming. Because the Russians had been saying for some time, this is not acceptable to think of Ukraine and NATO. Uh, and I think it's obvious why they would take that position. Uh, both uh, the, 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 the United States and uh, the NATO allies would say, no, no, we can't. Uh, you, uh, we can't give you, uh, you know, any particular authority over your neighbors. Uh, of course, they have a right to apply for NATO membership if they wish to. Well, you know, to talk about international relations in terms of rights is rather silly. Um, but uh, the point is <coughs> that from the time NATO began expanding, and many of us who argued against NATO expansion, uh, made the point that it's going to have to stop at some point because no Russian government will permit Ukraine or Georgia to become a member of an alliance which they are not in. After all, this is a country which for large parts for centuries had been part of Russia. Uh, and so um, I think that the failure early on to separate NATO expansion from the economic things is a problem. Second. I would say, given Ukraine's geographic position, history, and common, you might say, heritage of the Soviet period, the only thing that was going to work for economic reform would be a program that also included Russia. Uh, and uh, the negotiations really should have been with Russia and Ukraine and the EU uh, and an approach that uh, did them both. And if you leave the security issue out of that, then I think something good could have come of it. But the perception that the EU is simply the uh, advance guard to bring NATO uh, was, I think, really the, the crucial issue here. And I think that was a mistake to leave that impression. Uh, next question. Uh, yes, we have two over here, please. 